नमस्कार अ वॉर्म वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड न्यूज एंड इंडियन परस्पेक्टिव ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो दिस इज आर एस रघु एंड विद मी इज रेणुका ब्रिंगिंग ग्लिम्सेस ऑफ द मेजर डेवलपमेंट्स ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब ओवर द नेक्स्ट हाफ एन आवर वी शैल ब्रिंग यू द लेटेस्ट फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स इकोनॉमी स्पोर्ट्स एंटरटेनमेंट एंड मोर दी हेडलाइंस Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi discusses evolving COVID-19 situation with Russian President Vladimir Putin during telephonic conversation. Russia orders expulsion of seven diplomats from Slovakia, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia in retaliation for expulsion of Russian envoys. European Parliament ratifies post-Brexit European United United Union United Kingdom trade deal to ensure that tariff and quota free trade continues australia announces to spend 580 million dollars to upgrade its four northern military bases to boost engagements in indo pacific region and in ipl cricket sunrisers hyderabad set a target of 172 runs for chennai super kings in delhi As the number of covid cases is on the rise again we appeal to our listeners to take all precautions and all those above 18 years of age to get vaccinated without any hesitation the vaccination for the person of age between 18 and 44 would begin from 1st of may at designated facilities stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps wear a face mask maintain 2 gaz ki doori for social distancing focus on hand and face hygiene and now the news in detail Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi had a telephonic conversation with Russian President Vladimir Putin on Wednesday evening they discussed the evolving covid-19 situation president putin expressed solidarity with the people and government of india and conveyed that russia would extend all possible support in this regard Mr Modi thanked President Putin for Russia's help and support in India's fight against the pandemic and noted that prompt Russian support to India is a symbol of our enduring partnership. The two leaders noted the ongoing cooperation between the two countries to fight the global pandemic. Approval for emergency use of Sputnik V vaccine in India was appreciated by President Putin. The leaders noted that the Russian vaccine will be manufactured in India for use in India. Russia and third countries in a tweet Mr Modi said our cooperation on Sputnik V vaccine will assist humanity in battling the pandemic both leaders attached importance to further deepening bilateral cooperation in various sectors in the spirit of the special and privileged partnership they reviewed the diverse bilateral cooperation especially in the area of space exploration and renewable energy sector including in hydrogen economy Mr Modi conveyed appreciation for the support received from Russia for India's Gaganyaan program and the completion of the Russian phase of training for the four Gaganyaan astronauts to add further momentum to the strong strategic partnership President Putin and Mr Modi have agreed to establish a 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue between the foreign and defense minister The two leaders recalled the important decisions taken during their last summit meeting in Vladivostok in September 2019. Prime Minister Modi conveyed that he looks forward to President Putin's visit to India later this year for the bilateral summit which would provide an occasion to continue their personal and trusted conversation. President Putin assured the Prime Minister of Russia's full support for the success of India's presidency of BRICS during 2021. The two leaders agreed to remain in close touch on bilateral and international issues. Russia's foreign ministry has ordered the expulsion of seven diplomats from Slovakia, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia in retaliation for the expulsion of Russian envoys. The ministry gave the three Slovak and two Lithuanian diplomats as well as an envoy from Latvia and another from Estonia one week to leave Russia. Russia accused the four countries of showing pseudo solidarity with the Czech Republic which ordered most Russian diplomatic staff in Prague to leave last week after accusing Russian spies of being behind a 2014 blast at an ammunition depot. Russia has dismissed the accusations as absurd. Moscow and Prague are locked in their biggest row since the end of the communist era in 1989. 
The two suspects named by Prague in connection with the 2014 ammunition depot explosion, known under the aliases Ruslan Voshirov and Alexander Petrov, have been reported to be a part of the elite unit 29155 of Russia's GRU military intelligence service. Britain charged the pair in absentia with attempted murder after the poisoning of former Russian spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter with the nerve agent Novichok in the English city of Salisbury in 2018. Russia denied involvement in that incident. Amidst an increasingly bitter diplomatic and trade spat with China, Australia has announced to spend $580 million to upgrade its four northern military bases. Prime Minister Scott Morrison said that Australia must expand its military assets in the Northern Territory to be able to respond to unspecified tensions in the Asia-Pacific region. He added that Australia's objective is a free and open Indo-Pacific to ensure a peaceful region so that Australia is in a position to protect its interests. PM Morrison said an airstrip in the Northern Territory will be lengthened to support larger aircraft, firing ranges overhauled and new training facilities set up for defense personnel and U.S. Marines. The military upgrades will begin this year and be finished by 2026. While PM Morrison avoided naming China, Australia's military focus on the Indo-Pacific area comes amid rising competition between the two for influence in the region in recent years. Relations between Australia and China deteriorated even further after Canberra called last year for an international inquiry into the origins of the coronavirus, prompting trade reprisals from Beijing. The Philippines has reacted strongly to Beijing's opposition to its ongoing Coast Guard exercises inside the country's 200-mile exclusive economic zone EEZ in the South China Sea. Philippines Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana said that China has no authority or legal basis to prevent them from conducting exercises in the South China Sea as Chinese claims have no basis. The Philippine Coast Guard and Fisheries Bureau started maritime exercises on Saturday near a, near a Philippine-held island in the disputed Spratly Archipelago and at the heavily contested Scarborough Shoal. Responding to the exercises, China's foreign ministry had said that the Philippines should stop actions complicating the situation and escalating disputes. While China claims for almost the entire South China Sea in 2016, an arbitral tribunal in the Hague ruled their claim with China based on its old maps is inconsistent with international law. Hong Kong's legislature has passed a controversial immigration bill which lawyers, diplomats and right groups fear will give authorities unlimited powers to prevent residents and others from entering or leaving the Chinese-ruled city. The government, however, has dismissed the fears and said that the legislation which will come into effect on August the 1st merely aims to screen illegal immigrants at source amid a backlog of asylum applications and does not affect constitutional rights of free movement. Hong Kong Security Secretary John Lee said that they are facing increasing challenges, especially preventing the number of illegal immigrants from rising and claimants from abusing the system. He added that the travel rights remain guaranteed and that the government will introduce subsidiary legislation in near term. The assurances, however, come in a climate of mistrust after the increasingly authoritarian past officials have taken the imposition of a sweeping national security law by Beijing last year. Lawyers say the new law will empower authorities to bar anyone without a court order from entering or leaving Hong Kong, especially opening the door for mainland China-style exit bans. This is All India Radio giving you the world news. Three steps to stay protected and stay safe from COVID-19. Wear face mask, do gaz ki duri, to maintain social distancing, maintain hand and face hygiene. India registered the grim record of the highest number of fresh COVID cases and deaths due to the virus today. The record spike in coronavirus cases has increased the active case loads in several states and union territories. The Indian Health Ministry has informed that over 3,60,000 fresh cases have been reported in the country within 24 hours. This is the highest number of cases registered in a day since the outbreak of the pandemic in India. 
The ministry has informed that at present there are over 29,78,000 active cases in the country, which comprises 16.55% of the total positive cases. The recovery rate now stands at 82.33%. The ministry has said more than 2,61,000 people have recovered from the infection in the last 24 hours. So far, over 1 crore 48 lakh patients have already recovered from this infectious disease. The health ministry has said over 3,293 deaths have been reported in the country within 24 hours, taking the toll to over 2 lakh across the country. This is the highest number of deaths registered in a day since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. The world's largest COVID-19 vaccination drive is progressing smoothly in India. The Indian Health and Family Welfare Ministry has informed that over 14 crore 78 lakh people have already been inoculated with the vaccine in the country so far. From the first of next month, which is also the third phase of the largest vaccination drive, everyone above the age of 18 years will be eligible to take COVID vaccines. The Indian Council of Medical Research, ICMR, has intensified its efforts to enhance availability of COVID-19 testing kits and newer innovative testing solutions amid the rising cases of COVID-19 in India. A report. The ICMR has proposed to exempt several reputed global agencies from validation criteria for RT-PCR, RAT, home-based testing solution, antigen, antibody ELISA and rapid antibody tests. It further proposed to accord marketing permission by the Drugs Controller General of India on the basis of existing approvals. Several global agencies of Europe, Japan, South Korea, Australia, Brazil and agencies listed in the World Health Organization's emergency use listing will benefit from this move. At present, kits approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration under regular or emergency use are exempted from validation in India. It qualifies for direct marketing permission from the Drug Controller General of India. Manoj Singh Rana for World News or India Radio. In today's hotspot section, we bring you a discussion on COVID care and vaccination. In conversation are Professor Anjan Trikha in charge COVID Center Ames and AIR correspondent Anand Chaturvedi. First question, Dr. Trikha, what I should do to not get infected from COVID-19? See, as an individual, if you want to protect yourself from getting infected from COVID-19, you should remain inside your house. Don't leave your house unless totally essential. If you have to go out for whatever reasons, you should be wearing a mask and you should be maintaining distances. And when you come back, again, you should wash your hands and wash your face before you really eat or drink anything. So you maintain all the sterility possible. In your house itself, wear masks because there could be some asymptomatic carriers in your house. And try to remain in isolation as far as possible. I can very well understand that many people may not have so much of space in their houses. So... It is important for even those places, those people to wear masks in the house. What I should do if I am infected and asymptomatic? See, if you are infected and you are asymptomatic, that means you have a test which is positive and somebody has told you to do a test for whatever reasons. So if you are infected and you are asymptomatic, so you have to see for yourself that you don't spread it to other people. So you go into isolation, do not sit with your friends or co-workers to eat food or to have tea or anything else or sit together and watch a TV on the same sofa or something like that. Remain isolated in your room and stop going to your office or your place of work. What I should do if I'm infected and symptomatic for last three to five days when I have only fever or when I have fever, cough and cold? See, if you are infected and you have any kind of symptoms, you have named symptoms like fever and cough, so you should be on regular medications as per the doctor to take care of your fever around the clock. And you could be having some kind of a cough syrup so that your cough is suppressed and that is not that doesn't cause you much of a problem. At the same time, after you have taken care of this fever and cough, you should... Uh, Remain isolated in a room and not interact with other people. Home isolation or hospitalization, when and how? See, home isolation, the primary way you can do it, if you have a big enough house, if you have two-bedroom flat and you have five people to live in it, 
I can very well imagine and understand that home isolation is difficult. So then you can go into a COVID care center and not a hospital. There are COVID care centers which have been made by the government all over where people can go and uh, be isolated from the family members. If you have a big house and you are symptomatic and you can stay in a room with a toilet bathroom and take care of yourself, then you should be isolating in your house. You should only move to a hospital if your uh, oxygen is uh, dipping in your blood, if you are aware of a saturation, a pulse oximeter, if you are not, if you get symptoms, if you feel breathless, then you should uh, consult a doctor and be moved to a hospital. How to improve my oxygen saturation and what is pronal breathing? See, it is uh, your oxygen saturation can improve if you can do some uh, respiratory exercises or pulmonary exercises. And it is not pronal respiration. It is lying in the prone position and trying to take deep breaths when you lie flat on your stomach and not on your back. When you lie on your stomach and breathe, there are some people who, who can even sleep like this or who have a habit of sleeping like this. Then that parts of your lung get ventilated or when you breathe, air goes to that part of the lungs which are not really full of air when you lie on your back. So when you lie prone, which is on your stomach, and you uh, lie like this for some time, that is known as prone position breathing or prone ventilation or conscious prone ventilation. COVID testing is taking some time nowadays. What should I do about this in case I feel I'm infected? See, we all know that it may take up to one day in a metropolitan city or maybe more or maybe three to four days in a smaller city to get a report of a RT-PCR. If you think you are positive, you've given your test, the best way is to isolate yourself and consider that you are infective. You can pass on the virus to others and you are positive unless proven otherwise. Is there any prophylactic medication to avoid contracting the virus? See, uh, there were a lot of issues regarding prophylactic medications to avoid getting infected by coronavirus. However, uh, in the last 14 months, the evidence is very bleak or not at all regarding any other medications which you can take and you can avoid contracting or uh, getting COVID-19 virus. Initially, there was a big usage of hydroxychloroquine, but now over the years of the last 15 months, its use as a prophylactic medication is basically zero. Is it required for people at home to put on masks? Yes, this is one of the latest guidelines which have been released by the government and the DTO yesterday only because there are a lot of asymptomatic infected carriers in the societies. So it is advisable that you remain wearing a mask in the home so that you cannot, you can avoid getting infected. It is equally important that when you have household health coming into your houses, they should be wearing a mask and you should be also wearing a mask. What is double masking? How to do it and is it mandatory? Double masking is, as the word tells you, that you wear one mask and you wear the other mask over it so that every part of your nose and the face and the cheek is covered and it is it prevents any kind of uh, infected air getting into your nose and mouth. It will be difficult to describe the way you do it on audio device, but there are enough of uh, photographs available in the newspaper which tell you how to go about doing it. If you wear double mask, it is known as double masking, the chances of you getting infected, getting infected from another person or because of airborne aerosols full of virus is decreased tremendously. The next question is about vaccination. I took my first dose of vaccine had symptoms after some weeks. Can I take my second dose of vaccine at this time prescribed after the first dose? If you have taken a first dose of vaccine and then you have got infected and then you had tested positive and now you have come out of the COVID infection, so you should take the second dose of vaccine at least four weeks after you have uh, become asymptomatic. Some people say even six weeks, but anything between four to six weeks after you have come out of the COVID infection. I am 19 years old. Where can I get the vaccine? Can I get at government hospital or at any 
private hospital. How much will it cost? See, you can get it at the government hospital. It will be free for all the citizens of the country. And you can go to the private hospital where the cost would be very minimal. Uh, I think it should be about 650 rupees or 700 rupees, depending upon which vaccine is available at the private setup. But I suggest you go to the government hospitals where it is not going to cost you. Where and when to get registered for my COVID vaccination, which starts from 1st of May? To get registered for the COVID vaccination, you can go to the app for the COVID vaccination and you can easily get registered. If you are not computer savvy, you can go to your friend or any other person in your area who is computer savvy and he can get you registered and then you would be given a slot and then you can get it done. If you don't even have that, uh, you can go to any shop which has a computer or who deals in mobile phones or from where you book your tickets, railway tickets. There are so many people like this in the market. They can get you registered on the net and they will not charge you anything. How will the vaccine be useful for me? The vaccine will be very useful for you. The first thing is that if you have taken the vaccine, both the shots as per government advisories, and you have developed antibodies, you are the possibility is that you may not contact contract the disease, and if at all you get COVID infection, the severity of the disease will be tremendously less. So maybe you would have never to be hospitalized. You will never get that sick, and it's very unlikely that you will ever. Uh, needing to go on a ventilator. Are there any side effects of the vaccine? See, any injections, any vaccine would have side effects, which are very rare and government is monitoring them. The most common side effects are some pain and soreness at the point of injection. Then you could have some mild fever or some rash. And it is nothing very serious or significant. If you have anything more than that, the government is keeping a strict watch on the symptoms and these uh, problems, you should go back to the place or there is a phone number available, you could phone them up and they will advise you free of cost and tell you what to do and even tell you where to go to the nearest hospital if you have very serious side effects. By what time can I expect full protection after taking the vaccine? See, 100% protection from any vaccine for any disease in the world is not possible. It's only the efficacy or the efficiency of any vaccine which is important. So quite a large number of people would have protection against a disease after they've taken the vaccine as per standard guidelines. And the same thing goes good for COVID-19 vaccination also. So about two to three weeks after the second dose, ideally two weeks, you should have enough of antibodies which are likely to protect you from getting any serious COVID infection. Can I go out to work after being vaccinated and with the masks on and maintaining social distancing, of course? Am I likely to lose my daily wages for some days? See, the first thing is you can go to work with masks and social distancing after you've had your vaccinations, provided there are no guidelines or lockdowns or curfews in your area, and you'll have to uh, follow them and follow all those rules by the government. The second thing is, it's also the government has made it very clear that nobody will lose jobs if you are in a government setup, if you are ill or you have been taken down by infection of COVID-19. Is it mandatory to have COVID-appropriate behavior everywhere? Yes, it is mandatory. It is essential. And I go a step ahead. It is as essential as you wear your clothes. You wear your clothes when you go out to work. You wear your clothes when you are in your house. So all things which are done in a COVID-appropriate behavior should be as essential as clothes on your body, anywhere and everywhere. Is there a likelihood of getting some gynecological problems with vaccination? See, it's unlikely that uh, you can get a gynecological problem after vaccination. No, it's, it's not possible. Or if there is a side effect of any any which, which may be very rare, but that is not heard of. We've never seen it so far. Actually, Doctor, this question was pertaining to the some myth about the women who are menstruating like five days before or after. There are some 
messages doing rounds that they should no. avoid taking there is, that there is no government guideline which says that women who are menstruating or having their period should not get their jabs but then what is important is it is free of cost thank you so much doctor thank you so much The European Parliament has ratified the post-Brexit European Union United Kingdom trade deal, a key move to ensure that tariff and quota free trade continues. The Trade and Cooperation Agreement TCA has been operating provisionally since January. Members of European Parliament voted in favor by 660 votes to 5 while 32 abstained. The UK's chief negotiator Lord Frost said that the vote brings certainty and will allow the UK to focus on the future. Prime Minister Boris Johnson spoke of a final step in a long journey. He said that the trade deal provides stability to UK's new relationship with the EU as vital trading partners, close allies and sovereign equals. The result was also welcomed by the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen. Moving on to sports, in IPL cricket, Sunrisers Hyderabad have set a target of 172 runs for Chennai Super Kings in Delhi. In reply, Chennai Super Kings were 167 for 3 in 18 overs when reports last came in. Earlier, Sunrisers Hyderabad captain David Warner won the toss and chose to bat. Yesterday, Royal Challengers Bangalore registered a thrilling one-run win over Delhi Capitals as Mohammad Siraj defended 14 runs in the final over in Ahmedabad. With this win, RCB has moved to the top spot in the IPL standings with 10 points from 6 games. Now let us take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. Washington Post writes that White House proposes 1.8 trillion dollar package of education safety net programs. The Guardian reports that European Parliament votes through Brexit deal with big majority. The Guardian reports that Boris Johnson denies any offence after Electoral Commission announces investigation into flat refurb. Globe and the Mail writes that Canadian forces deploying to Nova Scotia, Ontario for COVID-19 response help also offered to Alberta. Globe and the Mail writes that Shopify's 1.3 billion US dollars profit eclipses revenue after another blistering quarter fueled by pandemic shift to online shopping. Gulf Times reports that Sidra Medicine research identifies mutation free spots within COVID-19 virus. The UK has become the first country to announce regulation of the use of self-driving vehicles at slow speeds on motorways. Britain's Transport Ministry today said that it was working on specific wording to update the country's highway code for the safe use of self-driving vehicle system. It added that the ministry will start with automated lane keeping systems ALKS which use sensors and softwares to keep cars within a lane allowing them to accelerate and brake without driver input according to the government the use of ALKS would be restricted to motorways at speeds under 60 km per hour a quick look at the headlines once again Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi discusses evolving COVID-19 situation with Russian President Vladimir Putin during telephonic conversation. Russia orders expulsion of seven diplomats from Slovakia, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia in retaliation for expulsion of Russian envoys. European Parliament ratifies post-Brexit European Union United Kingdom trade deal to ensure that tariff and quota free trade continues. Australia announces to spend 580 million dollars to upgrade its four northern military bases to boost engagements in Indo-Pacific region and in IPL cricket Chennai Super Kings beat Sunrisers Hyderabad by 7 wickets in New Delhi India is celebrating the 151st birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi before we end let us listen to his favorite bhajan Vaishnav Jan by artists from Zimbabwe And with that we end this bulletin we'll be back at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of world news